In this video, I'm going to go over an SAT problem that involves rationalizing the denominator. I will first go through a few examples of rationalizing the denominator, and then we'll go over an example SAT problem. So what does rationalizing the denominator mean? Basically, it means that we don't want any square roots or any kind of roots on the bottom of a fraction. So like here, we have 2 over the square root of 3. Now, so how do I get rid of that square root? Now, what, they, what we usually do is just multiply it by, by itself. So we multiply the top and bottom by square root of 3. Now we can do that because square root of 3 over square root of 3 is just equal to 1. So I'm really just multiplying it by 1. So if I multiply the bottom by square root of 3, square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is really square root of 3 squared. And at the top we have 2 times the square root of 3. And on the bottom, square root of 3 squared is really just 3 you end up with square root of 3 squared and square root of anything squared is just itself. So we just end up with 3 on the bottom and on the top 2 times the square root of 3. So now we don't have any square roots on the bottom so we have rationalized the denominator. So 2 over the square root of 3 becomes 2 square root of 3 over 3. Now this is a similar one, but we have a fraction underneath the radical. So this can be rewritten as square root of 26 over the square root of 5. And again, we want to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 5. So square root of 5 on the bottom times square root of 5 on top. So again, on the bottom, we're just going to end up with just 5. On the top, we multiply 26 times 5 to get the square root of 130. And just like that, we have rationalized the denominator. So the square root of 26 over 5 becomes the square root of 130 over 5. Now this one looks a little different. We have 2 over 5 plus the square root of 3. Now this one's going to be using something called conjugate. Now with the conjugate, we're going to multiply the bottom by 5 minus the square root of 3. So all we did there was change the sign in the middle. We're going to multiply the top by the same thing, by minus the square root of 3. Now when we do that, we're going to multiply these together. We're just going to use the FOIL method. So 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times negative square root of 3 is negative 5 square root of 3 and then square root of 3 times 5 is a positive 5 square root of 3 and then square root of 3 times square root of 3 so it be minus 3 and then we have like terms in the middle here negative 5 square root of 3 plus 5 square root of 3 adds up to 0 so I end up with just 25 minus 3 on the bottom. Now on top, we just have 2 times the quantity 5 minus square root of 3. So 2 times 5 is 10. And 2 times negative square root of 3 is 2, negative 2 square root of 3. Now if we reduce the bottom, 25 minus 3 is 22. And then we get 10 minus 2 square root of 3. Now with any fraction, you always need to put it in lowest terms. 
I look here, I get 10 minus 2 square root of 3. I can factor out a 2. It'll give me 2 times the quantity 5 minus square root of 3 divided by 22. And now I can see 2 on top and 22 on bottom. I can divide both by 2. And that reduces down to 5 minus the square root of 3 over 11. All right, so that is rationalizing the denominator using the conjugate. Now this one's gonna look pretty much the same. Again, I need to use a conjugate. I'm gonna do five plus the square root of three. Remember it has to be the opposite sign of what's in the middle here. So I'm gonna apply the bottom by five plus the square root of three and the top by 5 plus the square root of 3. Right, if I do that on the bottom, I get 25 plus 5 square root of 3 minus 5 square root of 3 minus 3. And on top, I want to get 5 times square root of 3 And then I'm going to have square root of 3 times square root of 3, and this is going to give me 3. Again, on the bottom, the squared terms cancel out, add up to 0. So I'm left with just a 25 minus 3. And then 5 square root of 3 plus 3 on top. And then 25 minus 3 is just 22. And the top is going to be 5 square root of 3 plus 3. So now we have rationalized the denominator. There's no square roots on the bottom of the fraction. All right, so now let's take a look at an example SAT problem. So here it says, what are the solutions to 3 times the quantity of x minus 3 squared plus 4 equals 14? We look at the answer choices. You know, basically we see fractions in there, so what I'm going to do is solve this equation. I'm going to try to get the x by itself. So my first step, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Now I have 3 times the quantity x minus 3 squared equals 10. The next step is to divide everything by 3. Now I'm left with x minus 3 quantity squared equals 10 over 3. Now I've got to get rid of this square. To get rid of a square, I need to take the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Leaves me with x minus 3. And then the other side is going to be plus or minus the square root of 10 over 3. And then I still need to get my x by itself, so I need to add 3 here. I want to add 3 to both sides. So it gives me x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 10 over 3. Now if I look at my answer choices, none of them have a fraction in the, the radical. So in this case we need to rationalize the denominator. So if we look at square root of 10 over 3, remember I can write that as square root of 10 over the square root of 3. Then I need to multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. So I end up with the square root of 30 on top, 10 times 3. And then square root of 3 times square root of 3 just becomes 3. Alright, so that will make my answer 3 plus or minus 
square root of 30 over 3, which is answer D.